Many times people tell ghost stories just simply to scare people away from places that may be dangerous, such as going and walking in the woods at Sweet Hollow at night. Whether it's the road itself that generates the stories, uh, or whether it's the stories that um, have kind of proliferated uh, and, and sort of taken on a, a life of their own uh, and focused on the road, is it's hard to say. Something's going on with this place. Yeah, there's, there's, <laughs> there's definitely something, something here. Lot, most people say this is like the number one haunted spot on Long Island. Yes, it is, yeah. I, I, don't, I, I don't know, this, this is some weird, weird stuff that goes on here daily. This is Carrie Ann, and this is Joe, and we're here, we're, here. we're open to communicate. I think it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy because people go into that area expecting something bad to happen. Not always, but sometimes tragic or scary or creepy, and they usually get what they're looking for. Uh, you just know. get a bad feeling. You get going a bad in. feeling. One day you're like, oh God, something bad's gonna happen, or something weird's gonna happen, and it, it usually does. So you're on edge, you're nervous. Maybe you drive down Sweet Hollow Road and you're, you're not really driving your normal way. You're driving too fast, too slow. You're not watching out. You Maybe you go over into the corner, into the shoulder, and you hit a tree or something terrible happens, and all of a sudden, you're in the paper, and everybody says, see? Sweet Hollow Road, another one. And maybe you see a little bit of fog on the side of the road, and you think it's a ghost. You go back and tell all your friends, oh my god, I saw a ghost on Sweet Hollow Road. They say, and now, normally they would say, oh, come on, it's just fog. But because of Sweet Hollow Road, it point. bumps it up a, a notch from your normal road. I can understand why there's a lot of stories behind this place, just because it looks really freaky. environment or the road itself, there's something about it that sort of makes it a, a epicenter or a hub for uh, all kinds of uh, mystical uh, activity. When we went to Sweet Hollow, we uh, felt a couple of areas that were cold spots, which are also another phenomena in a haunted location or a haunted house, where the energy gets sapped out of a particular part of the room or in the woods somewhere, and the air actually gets colder by several degrees. Now we have a couple of cold spots in Sweet Hollow Road. There's something about this road that puts people in um, the spirit where they're open to this sort of uh, paranormal um, activity. It was more or less a little up ahead, but on the right in these woods, that's where I saw whatever it was, like just floating up in the air and come down. Yeah, it was really, like, it scared the shit. We like to go to places that are beautiful. And I think spirits and souls would also want to go to a place that's very enchanted and beautiful, like Sweet Hollow Road. But can you imagine what this place must be like after dark? Yeah, but the, the, the beauty is that there are only certain places. I mean, there are thousands of roads on the line. Why this one, you know? That's what you have to ask yourself. It's like, um, if there isn't this kind of activity going on there, why did this road get that reputation? Whether these things are true, they're very difficult to prove, even the ones with the kids uh, who hung themselves. They all like they all like decided to commit suicide together and, and someone backed out. Uh, there's two stories about the uh, overpass at the Northern State. Uh, they're both involving uh, teenage boys. One is a rumor saying that some teenage boys had a suicide pack and hung themselves. You get to the um, bridge about maybe like 20 feet before you get to it. You stop there and you flash your um, headlights three times. Supposedly, you're supposed to see the shadows of them, them hanging. There's one, if you beep the horn, they will come out mm -hmm. and attack you. The other one is if you don't beep the horn, they, the they, horn, will, they will come out right. and get you. Exactly. So it's kind of, people have a little kind of moment of indecision. All right, one last question. Why do you think people come here? Why do you think it's a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm going to prove to everyone in this town just how serious we are.
People are going to freak out. So it's official. We're all in this. There's no backing out now. Right, Pete? Right. Right, Matt? Right as rain, brother. I don't need to question you, AJ, you sick bastard. <laughs> we'll be legends in this town. They'll call us the Mount Misery Suicide Circle. What are you fucking homos up to? Mount Misery Suicide Circle? What's that? Fuck off, Ant. Oh. oh, what's this? Oh, you got a little blood brother truce. How cute. Get off him. Oh, you guys are going to kill yourselves? Good riddance. No one's going to give a shit anyway. I said get off him. Yeah, Dad's going to be really happy about all the AIDS-infected blood you spilled on the carpet. He's not my dad. What'd you say? What did you just say? Nothing. No, I think I heard you say something. Leave him alone! You stay out of this, Maddie. You're an inconsiderate little shit, you know that? First, you gotta say it. Walter is my father. And why? Because he married my mother. You what? Because he married my whore mother. That's right. He married your slut, cunt, whore of a mother. Has anybody else got anything to say? Exactly. Clean up the carpet, you little shit. I say we off that fucker first. We got nothing to lose. Forget him. He deserves to live. I don't want to risk getting caught and thrown in jail before we get the chance to do it. I gotta go. Yeah, so do I. Come on, Maddie. Guys, tomorrow night, the diner. Last supper. Hey, you okay? Yeah. You? Same crap, different day. You're going through with this, right? Yeah, I already told you. Why do you keep bugging right, me right. about I'll, it? I'll see you tomorrow. Just don't leave us hanging. So what'll it be tonight, guys? How's your brother? He's not my brother. It's gonna be the last time you see us, Susan. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that before. What is it this time? Living in California? Touring with Metallica? Joining the army? Dying. <laughs> what'll it be? Cheese fries and a Coke. Surprise, surprise. And you? Guys, wait. This is our last supper. Something nice, it's on me. Where'd you get that? Anthony's father. I mean, he doesn't know yet, but fuck him. You guys need a few minutes? No. Whatever happened to your father anyway? He's dead. I'll have a surf and turf, meet him rare on the stake. Hey, can I get that piece of dog crap right there? Yeah, you can have it. Oh, what's him? Whatever happened to you guys anyway? Nothing. We just broke up. He's got issues. Look, you guys were all cute and cuddly. Whatever, just forget it. Why don't you just go talk to him? He obviously still have feelings for him. Just go. Alright. I'll be right back. That's yours. We weren't here tonight. me out here to give me some pin? No. I wanted to see if you still thought about us. About me. Why would I? There was a time when you loved me. I'm sorry. You must have been mistaken. I said I was sorry, okay? It was a stupid one-night stand. Look, it doesn't even matter anymore anyway, all right? 
It's not my pin. I don't even like that band. Wait. I miss you. guys in the car. It's just one creepy road. Yeah. This is where our predecessors did it. Still think we should do it here? No. As soon as we hand that first news, the cops will be all over us. Hey, Maddie, do you really want to spend the next two months under psychiatric evaluation? No, 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 no. Fuck that shit. I heard if you stop under the overpass and honk your horn three times, the ghost of the dead kids will push your car backwards. All right, guys, where are you? That's all right. I'll be joining you soon anyway. or girlfriends or something. Your yeah, boyfriends. Anyway, they were saying, this will be the last time you're gonna see us and talking about dying. Some real morbid shit. Just a little bit creepier than usual, that's all. Uh, you know, Susan, I forgot. We gotta go pick somebody up, but we'll be back later. Okay, sweetie, I'll see you later. Wait, who are we going again? We ain't getting shit. We're going to Mount Misery. We're gonna scare the crap out of my stepbrother and his gay little gang. I don't know, man. It's getting kind of late. This thing's gonna be up soon. Hey, shut the fuck up and drive the car. living anymore. Last words, Maddie? Life sucks, and then you die. Hey, Jen. Let's just fucking do this. Peter. You know, once we do this, we're dead forever. You know that, right? What's this? Isn't this an attempt at being dead forever? None of us want to live this life anymore. We're gonna be a national news story. We do it anyway. Why not here? Why not now? You're right. Let's just do it. Let's fucking do it. Seriously, how are we gonna find them in there? Don't worry. We'll find them. And we're bringing this. I don't know about that. <laughs> Relax, it's just to scare him. 
Let's go. Something happened, all right? It wasn't supposed to happen the way it did, but are you are you alone? Uh, yeah, come on in. It just happened so fast, and like I don't know. Okay, all right, know. all right. Here, here, relax, relax. Now, I'm gonna go get you a cup of coffee, okay? Oh, 
Fucking leave me alone! I'm sorry, okay? I didn't want to do it, I'm sorry, I'm sorry! Um, I need help. My boy, my ex-boyfriend, he's gonna kill himself. Please, hurry! Yes, what's the problem? You're too late. <laughs> He's in there. He's dead. See for yourself. <gasps> Excuse me, miss. Uh, there's no one in there. What? What do you know? Those bastards actually did it. Mary's grave is one of the biggest uh, legends, I think, on Long Island. And it is very interesting because everyone, for whatever reason, wants to have Mary's grave uh, in, in their town. Originally, when I started researching this, I thought it was. It seemed like uh, particularly the, the North Shore of Long Island. And then uh, I published this article, and someone told me that he grew up in uh, it was somewhere on the South Shore. And he was about my age, and so when he was a teenager, 
Uh, they, they'd all, you know, get a couple six packs, pile into a car, and go around looking for Mary's grave. So I said, oh, let's go on beyond uh, the North Shore. And I really looked into it. I found other similar stories uh, in other locations, New England, Chicago, uh, even one in England. There isn't a specific place, you know, so there are all these places that claim uh, there's a Mary, the Mary's grave originated there. There are several different towns, so that one's a little tricky. We've explored that it could be off of Sweet Hollow Road in Mount Misery area. It could be um, in head of the harbor, Stony Brook, uh, Setauket, Mount Sinai. And who who is Mary? People have all these stories about it. If there was an actual historical Mary, we don't know about it. There are many stories, one, as we had mentioned before, in Sweet Hollow, that uh, Mary could have been the, the woman in the car who was arguing with her boyfriend, and then he tossed around, she got hit, and she haunts, haunts the woods. Mary was murdered. Mary murdered somebody else. Uh, Mary died tragically. Mary's grave is cursed. If you uh, trespass on her grave, uh, you'll meet a tragic end yourself. Like there's one story that says you find the grave, yeah, Go to her grave at midnight, you turn around three times and say her name, and she'll appear. You'd hear, you'd hear things, you'd, you'd swear you saw something, and, and even the guy, you know, eventually someone gets gay and you jump in the car and, you know, get out of there. But uh, uh, nothing, I never met any ghosts, although, I, you know, I saw a couple of things move in the distance that freaked me out a little bit. People have claimed to see the lady in white. Is that Mary? Uh, there's another story about Mary's grave that said that the girl was abused by her father and that if someone comes to her grave you could hear her crying and that she's trying to help other young girls avoid abuse from their parents. Mary's jealous of her boyfriend, she shoots him, or Mary, Mary murders her mother and father, or Mary's father murders her. There's always some sort of uh, tragedy, a young girl and tragedy. So the story is within us, it doesn't come from outside. We, we need it for some, we need this character, like we need Elvis, right? he's been dead for 30 years, we, st we still need him, we need him to be alive. It was a date place, you would get, a, you know, someone would get their car, the mother's car, or someone would get their father's car, and we'd get a couple of friends and we'd get whatever girls wanted to come and we'd drive up there. You'd drive through it and tell the stories about Mary and, you know, try to get the girls scared. And, you know, so it was, it was a cool high school place. Teenagers uh, become fascinated with them. Uh, there are people who have had you know, kids, you know, coming into the yard at night with picks and shovels. And this actually happens. They're looking for Mary's grave. There is a graveyard to the north of me here. We do have people that come in and ask if the place is haunted. Personally, I don't like to be here alone at night. I just get spooked for some reason. But there are customers that do come in and ask about it. That used to be called Mary Hatchett's Graveyard when I was younger. And as a matter of fact, it's coming back to me now that when I did go in there at one time being younger, like 15, 16 years old, there was this white aura or thing that was there and it just spooked us where we quickly turned the car around and drove out. You know, I don't know anyone that actually found the grave, although they said it was there, you know, but we'd, we'd go and walk around and check till someone got, and it'd get really scared because you'd never go until midnight, and you'd never, you know, bring a flashlight or whatever and um, try to find the grave. We never found it, so. I mean, there are people that claim um, that they have found it, but it's it's the fun is is looking for it, not finding it. You know, it's it's a payoff if you find it, but um, the it's it's more fun going out with your friends and looking mm -hmm. and scaring people. You take it oh, out for the first time. Yeah. That goes without saying. Yeah, sure, sure. Girl, Heidi. Who's Heidi? Mm. Uh, some girl he works with. Uh, they were gonna meet up earlier, but she had to work or something. What time is it? 1:45. Let me 
what the hell are we gonna do tonight? The whole night's shot. I don't know, maybe they got an idea. Are they friends? What? Brian and this girl Heidi, they're just friends. I don't know. But you know Brian, it's not like he's looking for a date to the dance. Besides, he said she's a slut. Steven, Ray, this is Heidi. Hey. Hey. So, what are we gonna do tonight? What can we do? It's two o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I'm sorry, that's my fault. I stuck at work. Well, not, not exactly my fault, because some girl didn't show up for work today, so I got stuck dancing all night and get off till like an hour. Yeah, that's a sad story, isn't it? Hey, I gotta use the bathroom. Yeah, me too. So, hi. Hey. Steven, is it? Yeah. What do you do? <laughs> Nothing. Just hang out, I guess. That's cool. I like to get into trouble, shit like that. Do you like trouble? <sighs> she's smoking, right? <laughs> she's okay. Okay? Don't give me that I'm too cool bullshit. She's prime ass and you know it. Yes, okay, she's fucking hot. Congratulations. Thank you. <sighs> right? I think she might be the one. I'm serious. I'm serious. I have always wanted a slutty southern belle, and I think I finally found one. Look, man, she's so easy, you hardly have to try. Yesterday, in the back room, we went at it, man. There were customers everywhere. It drove her nuts. I mean, fucking crazy. <sighs> and she's into the group thing. And I'm thinking tonight we take her someplace dangerous. No shit. What do you got in mind? I think you know. Tonight? Yeah. Oh shit, I guess I'll go. Yes. Yeah, but good luck getting Steve to go. He's terrified of that place. Oh, fuck him then. I don't know why you hang out with that one. Come on. He's, a, he's afraid of everything. And need I remind you? The group thing. What's with the pine car? Nothing. It's supposed to protect you from evil energy, evil spirits. Ooh. Evil spirits. Sounds scary. You religious or something? Uh, just uh, a little superstitious, I guess. All right, let's keep going. Where are we going? Oh, Some place in the woods. Real scary. What? Sounds cool. Sounds Look, can you just take me home? Are you kidding? We're almost there. I don't feel right about going to this place tonight. What is it anyway? It's called Mary's Grave. You see, what happened is about 200 years ago, this girl named Mary was accused of using witchcraft after the townspeople found the bodies of her family mutilated in some sort of sacrifice. <laughs> yeah, they raped and killed her down this road. If you find a grave site, they say she won't let you leave. Quit being an asshole, right? You know I don't like this place, just take me home. Don't be such a pussy, Steve. It's just the fucking woods. Yes, Steve. I'll hold your hand. See? Here it is.
Now, they say if you stop the engine, the car won't start. Quit fucking around, Ray. Ray, quit fucking around. Uh, I'm not kidding, I swear. Quit fucking around, Ray. No, no, it's not me, Ray, I swear. Quit fucking it's around. It's not me, I swear. Let's get out and walk. It's the grave. I found the grave! They say if you find Mary's grave on this night, you could see her ghost. Where is her ghost? Give me that. Hey, man, what's the deal? Shut up! Ray, what the fuck are you doing? Fuck, Ray, you know what you just did? Yeah, I know. You taught me about Mary's grave. Me and Steve used to come out here all the time, remember Steve? Yeah. We lit those candles, we bled those cats. We called out for her, remember? Mary! Mary! You remember what we saw? What did you see? We saw her. She lives in these woods, right, Steve? Shut up, Ray. Yeah, she lives down the trail at the end on a swing. This is the night she died. Shut up. Shut up, Ray! Yeah. They said she was a witch and they killed her. They raped her and they hung her at the tree at the end of the trail. Let's go. You coming? No. Fine. Stay here alone. Found her at the end of this trail. This is starting to freak me out. I don't want to go any further. Okay. We're here. Look. Ray. Who the fuck is that? This is not funny. I'm, I'm
right over here. This is where it happened on this night five years ago. I'm fucking scared, okay? Are you happy now? Don't worry, I'm here. I'll protect you. <laughs> You're gonna protect me? It's right over here. There are certain uh, things like um, abandoned places, and especially abandoned places like um, uh, mental asylums that uh, just conjure up these sort of nightmare images. I don't know, maybe this Howard Grant here, it's a haunting kind of a, in a beautiful sort of way. It's almost, you get the feeling of how the people must have felt living there is what the walls and the inside looks like now. If you go at night, literally, it feels like you're in a horror movie instantly. It's ridiculously scary and huge. William Augustus Muhlenberg founded St. John He was an Episcopal priest. And then Kings County got the idea from Reverend Muhlenberg and purchased 800 acres here in 1885 for uh, Kings County Farm. That lasted 10 years and the state took it over and it was a dollar transfer and uh, flourished for 100 years to the month. The town was actually built around the hospital. That's right. Okay, because people came here, they worked there, they lived here, and that's how this town became this town. The state had this place for 100 years to the month. It closed officially in 1996, November. There's a very strange history to that particular psychiatric center as opposed to a lot of the other ones as far as the communal living concept goes. Mm -hmm. and. They thought that if they gave people jobs and, you know, they did farming and, and all sorts of strange... It was all self-sustaining. It was all self-sustaining. They used the patients down here for everything. They worked on the wards, they worked out on the farm. We had a mattress shop, a shoe shop, we had a pharmacy. They did about everything. They, they kept the whole hospital. It was like the lawns were manicured down there, so beautiful. But then the new drugs come in, new psychiatrists come in. These patients should not be working. They should have their freedom. They should be resting and taking Thorazine and their medicines. I think the state felt that, uh, uh, that you could cure all these people and there was no need for a home, you know? So that's why they, one of the reasons they closed up the home besides economical reasons, but uh, um, they just felt you could cure patients, so they sent them all, all the patients, for the most part, go to... Um, Halfway houses. Yeah. 1968 or something like that? 25 years. We heard one of them didn't come back. They were allowed out on day passes. The guy didn't come back at night. So all the kids, and I was 1968, I was not even 10, I was 10 years old. We're all nervous in the neighborhood. I think it is a nut job running around. Find out the next day they get drowned in the river and that's a crime. These places have a history of abuse and neglect and just the most horrid, squalid uh, living conditions. I had a family member, a relative, a grandparent that worked in there as a nurse. She won't even talk about it, like at all. She yeah. wouldn't talk about it to this day. She just won't mention it. She won't even acknowledge that she worked there ever. But she said said it was like the worst, like the patients and everything, how they treated everyone. Like the shock therapy was just awful and she had to administer it. Well, I have seen, uh, you know, for entertainment, uh, 
Uh, I mean, I mean, somebody hitting a patient. You know, where the patient went into a uh, grand mal seizure. That was like 50 years ago. Very isolated case. And me as a new young employee, I was terrified. What am I going to do? Go up against this guy, 40 years old? And, I mean, they could fire me on the spot. So I had to uh, knuckle under and just uh, watch it. They had children down there too. They had children from yeah. I worked on it. You didn't get the class of people that worked there as employees. Uh, they would mishandle them, abuse them. You couldn't get anyone else to work there with these kids. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to work with them. And if they did work with them, they abused them. And that would, uh, you just have to turn your back towards it. There's a, there's a cemetery. I think it's up across, up on the hill. Sure. The markers are kind of, uh, well, they're very stark, and they're, uh, I think there's a names in a couple of them, but they're concrete markers. Uh -huh. And uh, some have names, most of them have numbers. Uh, I, I think there's only five or ten of them up there. But yet there are hundreds of people buried there. From what I've heard and what this undertaker told me, John Kissick, who died about five years ago, you know, it's almost like they did it in a ma like mass grave kind of a thing, um, where they'd stack them. And they, and they made the, the caskets here, I think, at the hospital. They just, it was a real crude form of a casket and a lot smaller. And they'd uh, put the patient in the box and they, and they put the bottle and they put paper with his name and patient number and diagnosis, how he died, when he died, uh, in the casket with a cork and they'd, put, they'd cork the bottle. Um, I think the average person that goes to Kings Park is probably between the ages of like what, 13 and 16. Um, they usually go to the water tower, which is on the outskirts of the property, which is more towards the mass graveyard. Um, it's all covered in graffiti and broken bottles and beer and yeah, people probably fire party pits. There. So they party there just like they would at any beach or, you know, local haunt. The one <laughs> thing that I believe is that the place is crawling with stoners. That's about it. <laughs> I went there with a couple of friends. We just went through buildings, all my friends have been doing that for like a couple of years and they get so psyched about how it's like a creepy rundown place. We used to have to have a place to go get drunk and do bad things and people go to the Kings Park Psychiatric Center. Yeah, we used to drive around to scare each other. Scare people and tell stories like while we were driving around. Absolutely. You drive through just to freak each other out, you know? And sometimes you wouldn't have to freak each other out because weird stuff would happen. I always think that there's some ex-mental patient still living in the, uh, yeah. the corridor somewhere. Which <laughs> well, that's the great creepy. Yeah, over. that's the uh, the thrill factor is the further you uh, advance through these places and, and the deeper you get into them, uh, the more your imagination starts to uh, play tricks on you. Uh, that and the fact that there's usually uh, in um, you know, urban areas uh, like a lot of these places, right? You, you get homeless people in there who are sometimes not so uh, healthy, mentally speaking. Anyway, we were just there and we were taking pictures and we have all the equipment with the backpacks and we walk around and we're talking, blah, 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 blah. The more you talk, the less you hear, so it's better off that way when you're there to do something like take photographs and you not investigate. Yeah, always you find yourself running out of the buildings, like, okay, I'm good. Um, not good. We were down in the tunnels and we were at, actually in the basement of one of the buildings that led to the tunnels and we were just sort of walking down the tunnels because we don't really like the tunnels. We don't really like to walk around them. A lot of kids down there, a lot of homeless people down there. You don't know what you're going to run into that's alive. That'll hurt you. And we hear kids playing. <laughs> Running around, kids chattering. We hear swings going. We, 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 we seesaws. We're like, did you hear that? Did you hear that? And she was with her boyfriend at the time and he's like a big dude and he was like, dude, that's not cool. We're like, all right, whatever, man, chill out. And he's like, it's not cool, man. It's getting all wigged out. So we're like, all right, let's go check it out. Go back upstairs. We go out the building, and there's, sure enough, a playground right outside the building. Except for not only is there no kids there, the weeds are overgrown, and the swings are just chains. Uh, supposedly in building 93, they uh, used a bunch of the floors for 
sacrificial pig rituals <laughs> and left the corpses hanging there to rot. One of the legends that I've heard for the psych center was that supposedly there's a ghost dog that wanders around, wanders around inside the psych center. And there's another one that in 93, in the tunnels, supposedly there's this girl, Mary, she was trapped in there, she died, and supposedly every night you can hear her screaming. One of the main draws to uh, urban exploration is the artifacts that are left behind uh, because they uh, conjure up such vi vivid imagery of what these places must have been like in their existence. I mean, we've seen, uh, you know, uh, human restraint devices, uh, uh, you know, adult-sized cribs, uh, these antique operating rooms. Of uh, course the uh, straight jackets always laying around are nice. And you know, we go down in the tunnels and you see these gurneys that they used to transport patients back, uh, back and forth underground, uh, the, the, the old wheelchairs, um, and patient records. You know, it's like these things are just, you know, decades and decades of patient records, uh, mug shots, uh, fingerprints. Um, whole lives, the history of people's lives, thousands of people that, that went through these places, just discarded, left behind, uh, strewn around the floor. Um, I would find paperwork on the patients, you know, like notes of the day, like da-da-da, I was fighting with da-da-da, and I was like, this is not right, like they're supposed to take all this with them. There's all sorts of paperwork everywhere. You can pick up papers off the floor and read about someone's mental history. Um, the strange drawings all over the walls, not the graffiti. Christmas cards. Christmas cards from their family. It's, it's pretty intense. This whole clothes. file cabinet's in there full of stuff. Personal clothes left there, just like people's Christmas cards and toys and stuff like that. And um, it's just really weird when they had like this long-term plan of shutting down the psychiatric centers to like just get up and leave like it's the middle of the night. The, the hospital itself, you know, was a great idea, but now it's in a big dilemma as to what to do with it because of all the uh, asbestos and who will pay to clean it up. Homeowners are expected to keep their own property up uh, and well kept and, you know, not an eyesore basically, so the state should pretty much do the same thing. I realize it would cost a lot to clean it up, but it's a responsibility that they should take. There's some beautiful buildings on that property. I don't know if you yeah. ever walked that property. Yeah. The old doctor's houses, you know what I mean? You say, gee, why knock it down? Why not? Why not put something yeah, in them? So Sell them off. Yeah. Well, just short of not putting another strip mall or you know, nine mini marts or whatever in there, just make it make you know, affordable housing. It'd be cool if it was open to the public, some somewhat, so you could go in there without having to get arrested. Still, even when I go uptown to the supermarket, the post office, when I uh, when I pull down that boulevard past uh, soccer buildings, the houses up there. I take a big sigh of relief, you know, away from the maddening crowd. You know, and it's like going back to 1930. It's just hard to leave. It's timeless. A timeless zone in here. There's no town like it. It's just so unique. Not even Rocky Point or Huntington. There's a lot of rich homes there yeah. and McMansions, which to me are very ugly and depressing. And I think that's what it would turn to here. Right. Teflon conference centers, McMansions, and pricey homes and rich people. Mercedes Benz, and ah, that's ugly. Let's give the poor guy a break.
right about this town. There are a lot of weird people around here. Lucy! Okay, I think that guy is looking for you. Do you want to hear a story? Well, I guess so. What's wrong? You seem so serious. Remember that boyfriend I had in college a few years ago? That's him. Why are we going here anyway? One of the things you have to know about Long Island is that all of the cool places are turning to strip balls. So when you're looking for something cool to do, this place is a definite must-see. I remember when we were 16. What? It was, like, it was, it was we. <laughs> Never mind. We smoked in our way, but it was the freakiest thing I've ever seen. What was so freaky about it? Mental asylum. Just like I remembered it, even without the floor. It is even creepier in the daylight. Even without the shadows, the place is a real pull. Notice those windows? It's a sort of glare on them that makes it look like stuff is moving around inside. It's just the sun, but I don't really 
reflects off the windows is just fascinating. I have a confession to make. What? The last time I was here, I came as a girl and left as a woman. You had sex here? Why? The people who lived here were tortured mentally and would scream for mercy. You decided to have sex in a place of such misery? Well, I don't know. I thought it was naughty and a little exciting. Better than some childhood bedroom waiting for mom and dad to come home. Why not the cemetery? Why not some fucking grandmother's grave? You really are stupid, you know that? Fuck off! That was ten years ago. You know, some kids actually enjoyed having fun in high school. And maybe if you had, you wouldn't be so uptight right now. Look. We came to this town because I wanted to show you the place that I grew up in. I thought you'd get a kick out of the claim to fame of this town house. But obviously I was wrong. Let's just get out of here, you know? I, I think there's a diner nearby and I'm, I'm getting hungry.
there. It's me. Can come to Kings Park. I can't explain. I really need your help. Bring him home. It's not terrible. It's terrible out here. psychology classes we learned about this syndrome where people go crazy from seeing places of significance. Maybe something like that happened to him. I don't know. One moment we're, one moment we're fine and he's happy and the next he's just flipping out and it's like he's in another world. for a long time, but I guess they thought he could make it out of the world. But he's always here. He's just gone, you know?
everyone has a story in their town. And, you know, they're not all good, of course, but they're interesting ones. If you had no idea of the stories, you wouldn't fear it at all. There would be no threat at all. I would think twice about swimming there for no, no apparent reason. I mean, the, 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 the water is uh, calm. There are no rocks underneath the surface. It's just a sandy bottom. There doesn't seem to be any danger there whatsoever, yet it has a terrible record of drownings. Why? When I was in high school, the rumors were that the, it was a bottomless lake and that uh, every 10 years or so a body would, someone would drown and they'd never find the body. Um, that there was an uh, underground, uh, it was connected to something. When we were kids, we, were, we came down here and we, we were watching for the submarines that came over from the, from the sound. Well, they say that it was bottomless, that's been the urban legend for years. How much documentation there is to it, I think it's mostly folklore. But uh, I can see where this could have been a lake, you know, 200 years ago that would have had all of the mystery with it. There are very few people that swim in that lake. Uh, there used to be thousands. People came from Brooklyn all for the whole, for the day. And the whole lake was all lit up. Uh, Jack Beard, say, had you know, entertainment from New York and everything. Oh, it was a lively place. When the, ga uh, the crowd was down at the uh, pavilions, the lifeguards, they they uh, uh, try to keep the uh, people close to shore so they wouldn't, people wouldn't drown. We were there last summer and there might have been two or three people in the whole lake. It, it almost seems silly to have that beach there, you know. And we were there one day, beautiful, warm, sunny day, and there was lifeguards sitting there in the lifeguard chair. There was no one on the beach. Uh, there wasn't anybody in the lake. It, they actually yeah. did have a rope that went out about 10 feet in the lake, and that's like well, where you yeah. can swim. Like yeah, yeah, the first they, they keep bringing the area. swimming area in closer <laughs> and closer. Growing up in Ronkonkoma, there was always a story of a uh, lady of the lake, some Indian princess. The lady of the lake uh, there are so many stories, and it's all revolving around this Indian princess that supposedly drowned there. Uh, maybe that did happen, and maybe that was passed on, and it was terrible. Maybe it was, you know, the chief's daughter or someone that died, and the story kept getting passed on, how horrible she died there. Um, but then one story leads to the next. The most popular version would be uh, the one where, on her wedding night, her uh, husband-to-be was attacked by a settler, and she was so distraught that she canoed out into the middle of the lake, tied rocks to her ankles, and then jumped out of the canoe and died. And because she was so angry for someone taking her fiancé's life, that from that point on, she decided to take every male that swam in the lake. Uh, there's another story where it wasn't a member of her tribe, that it was a white settler. And because he was white and she was Indian, and that wasn't acceptable, that she committed suicide because they could never be together. So there's a lot of uh, stories surrounding this, uh, that there are this, it's bottomless, that there are secret tunnels, that that's where, how come no bodies have been found because they've gone through these tunnels to places in Connecticut. And, and uh, so people go there expecting to see this. People have claimed that they've seen, seen lights or heard strange noises and screaming and that sort of thing. And then there is the talk of um, that she comes and takes drowns a male virgin every year. There have been some drownings there. Nothing has been completely confirmed. Um, but a drowning is a drowning. It could be an accident. People drown in all sorts of places. But again, because it was there, it must be the Indian princess. But I did have a friend from school that drowned in there. Really? really? Yeah, not a close friend, but a guy that I knew. I know one of the fellas whose son drowned in the lake. Now, we were just talking about that. It was about seven years ago. He was crossing the lake in a canoe, and he fell out and unfortunately passed away. And that was the last one. The theory is there was usually one every year. 
unfortunately it stopped about seven or eight years ago. How fortunate we are we haven't had many of the drownings in the last couple of years. There doesn't seem to be any reason, uh, rhyme or reason, to uh, for the the drownings. So there's a story to explain them. You know, which came first, the drownings or the stories of the drowning? The Indian chief that might have lost his daughter in the lake due to a drowning may have just said, "I'm going to invent a story about her ghost roaming around the lake, so that no one else goes to the lake and drowns." So many times, people tell ghost stories just simply to scare people away from places that may be dangerous. Sometimes I have dreams about what it must have been like to drown like that, to gasp for air, to be pulled down into the darkness. If I hold my breath, Will I know what it felt like? You okay, miss? Okay. Are you able to move? Breathe slowly, breathe slowly. Okay. 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 Let's get up. Come on, okay. okay. Miss, miss, we need to get help. I don't know what to do. Listen. Can you make it to my car? We gotta get you to a hospital or something. Listen. I'm gonna run to my car. I'm gonna go get some help. You stay here. Don't move. I'll be really quick. <laughs> Miss. Miss, is that you? Hey. Hey.
you alone? Do you want to be left alone? It's a weird time to be sitting here in front of the lake. You came here alone? Yeah. Well, it's a good place to go when you want to be left by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. My brother drowned out here a long time ago. That's, um, horrible. I'm... I'm sorry. This lake is creepy as hell. Come out here sometimes. Just to make myself feel... unsafe. It's my older brother. I was so much smaller than him. He can swim so much further than me. There's something out there. The wind. Singing. Two weeks ago, in the water. What happened? If you're thinking about going in again, I'm not going in after you. I think you were trying to kill yourself. Listen, miss. I'm sorry. I... My boyfriend. You're so much like him. It's... It's weird, I mean... You drowned in there. He, um, drowned in there. This is where we used to meet. <laughs> we used to have to sneak out in the middle of the night. Everyone allowed to see each other. Then one night he went into the lake. <laughs> I wanted to feel what he felt. I wanted to know what he had to go through. What he must have been thinking. How scared he was. He was alone. No one was there to help him. I am alone. You're not alone. He's dead. I'm still alive. Tell me about your brother. Personally, I think the story is real. The story I heard was of an Indian princess who committed suicide by drowning herself in the lake.
She was in love with a young brave of the tribe who was murdered by a white settler living in Ronkonkoma. I remember hearing that one. Yeah. When she went into the water to her death, she vowed to the onlookers that she would avenge the murder of her lover and take a white man down with her every year. At least one person drowns swimming in the lake every year. Wasn't there something about her spirit haunting the lake, causing whirlpools and waves, and moaning sounds, and other crazy occurrences like that? And she tied rocks around her ankles to pull her down to the bottom of the lake. And supposedly, you can hear her dragging the rocks as she walks and haunts the woods. The lake is supposed to be bottomless, and the current just takes you out to the sound to Connecticut. Maybe she had a problem getting boys. What? Yeah, maybe she was unattractive and he was the only guy she can get. And that'd make me really depressed. Come on, you're horrible. What? Maybe if she did a few laps around the lake, and stayed in shape, the young native boys would pay more attention to her. I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're a horrible human being. A horrible, horrible human being. Haven't you ever been in love before? Sure. Contrary to your perceptions of me. My perceptions of you. I just met you. There are no perceptions. I don't go from lake to lake picking up chicks. I never said that. I never said that. You did. With your eyes and your tone. It could be painful, but you get over it. I mean, look at me. I'm here every week. I guess that would stay with me too for a long time. Forever. I got a buddy who keeps a boat out on the lake. You feel like exercising the demons? Miss, you okay? What's with this miss thing? I don't think we were ever formally introduced. My name is Grace. Grace. Alan. What happened? What did you see?
Sometimes I have dreams about what it must have been like to drown like that, to gasp for air, to be pulled down into the darkness. If I hold my breath, will I know what it felt like?